Hi everybody, this is Dino Chris from Prehistoric Facts, and this is an Ancient Christmas episode, so let's actually get right to it. Alright, Brendan from Morris, New York. Hey, this is your buddy, Brendan. I hope you had a, have a good birthday yesterday. I did, actually, and yesterday was actually my birthday, and I turned 27 years old, and uh, you can guess what year I was born. But even though um, I had a good time, and got to see a pretty cool movie, and then, you know, that kind of stuff. Anyway, who went in a fight? Tarbosaurus or Carcharodontosaurus? Well, let's actually compare these uh, animals actually here. Let's see, Tarbosaurus is a Tyrannosaur, uh, basically lives in Mon that lived in Mongolia and China around pretty much basically 75 to 68 million years ago. And uh, it actually is basically nearly the same size as Tyrannosaurus rex, but even though it's a little bit smaller in height, uh, it's lighter built, and also um, it has some sort of features that are a little bit different from Tyrannosaurus Rex. But even though it actually has uh, some some similarities, basically got a large skull, ma massive teeth, uh, great eyesight, great sense of smell, great sense of hearing, small arms, a uh, uh, muscular broad tail, and basically strong legs for for speed and also and also to balance its weight. And basically, uh, Tarbosaurus would probably be maybe uh, probably reach speeds of probably pretty close to 25 miles per hour. And basically, that uh, it actually hunts uh, some hadrosaurs and uh, maybe some therizinosaurs and, uh, and probably some ankylosaurs, but basically juveniles mostly. And uh, probably could go after some smaller sauropods if it actually had to. And so that way. And basically, it actually lived in the Cretaceous period, and so that way, in the late Cretaceous. And then we go to Carcharodontosaurus. Carcharodontosaurus uh, basically uh, lives in northern Africa, pretty much around uh, uh, around 105 to 95 million years ago. And uh, it actually would hunt sauropods and actually and, and uh, Aranosaurus and those kinds of dinosaurs. And basically, it is. A little bit over 40 feet long, pr pretty much, pretty much the same size as the largest Tyrannosaurus rex uh, so far to be found. And basically, uh, it actually is a Carcharodontosaurus, that's suggested to the name. And basically, like uh, with all Carcharodontosaurus, it has a uh, large skull, basically with more narrow skull. Um, Small arms, not really as small as the Tyrannosaurus, uh, but even though uh, probably not good enough to be useful that much. It uh, has um, muscular tail and also very strong legs. Now, speed-wise, Carcharodontosaurus would actually probably have speeds of probably around 20 miles per hour. And then basically, uh, it, would actually, it would have a good sense of smell. Good sense of hearing, but its vision is kind of limited in terms of basically that it would have good vision from basically side to side. But in terms of binocular vision, uh, it would not actually have uh, very great eyesight for that. Whereas Tarbosaurus actually would have uh, binocular vision and basically would actually be able to judge distances a lot better. Now, in terms of how these how this fight would actually go, now these two animals lived in different type different uh, times in the Cretaceous. So basically, the environments are actually going to be very different. Our Carcharodontosaurus probably lived pretty much around floodplains and in uh, drier areas, whereas uh, Tarbosaurus probably lived in like the forested and some of the plains, uh, those types of uh, kinds of environments. But even though with if the basically how these two would match up. Now, Carcharodontosaurus is a little bit larger than Tarbosaurus, so basically, uh, in terms of in terms of size, uh, Carcharodontosaurus would actually have the upper hand in this. Um, and in terms of agility-wise, Tarbosaurus would actually have that ability. Now, in terms of brain power, brain power would probably determine this fight, and this would actually come into uh, the point of basically Carcharodontosaurus didn't really have that big of a brain uh, compared to the Tyrannosaurus. The Tyrannosaurus had a much bigger brain uh, than the Carcharodontosaurus. And basically these two animals, these two types of animals come from different types of family groups of theropods. 
where basically Carcharodontosaurids actually kind of came from like a family group that would have been called the Megalosaurids. And basically, they evolved from that kind of branch of family that were pretty much known as the Carnosauria, uh, whereas the Tyrannosaurs, they belong to a group of theropods called Slurosaurs. And basically, the Tyrannosaurs are the largest Slurosaurs uh, known. And basically, these type, these differences are basically that uh, Slurosaurs would have been a lot faster, and also they would actually have much bigger brain power. Bigger brain, bigger, better intelligence. So basically, that actually would probably determine this fight. As I would say, Tarbosaurs would actually win out in this, just because basically that it actually has the better vision, and also it actually has the agility, and also has a much stronger bite uh, than Carcarodontosaurus. And so bite power would actually determine this battle as well, because basically if Carcarodontosaurus Car Car would actually get a few blows, basically just have some slashing bites uh, to Tarbosaurus. But even though Tarbosaurus is a little bit faster and also probably would actually have the ability to actually puncture the leg bones of Carcarodontosaurus, because basically all Tarbosaurus actually has to do is aim at the legs and basically is is basically aim at the legs to make a powerful bite and basically our Carcarodontosaurus would go down a lot easier and also it could actually make the killing blow to the neck and so that would actually probably determine this fight brain power would actually determine this battle if some of you actually are Carcarodontosaurus fans you'd say Carcarodontosaurus would actually win this battle uh, I mean that. I mean that's your opinion. I mean this is my opinion given to what what I think would happen in this battle. And so basically, I think Tarbosaurus would actually win in this one, due to the fact that brain power would actually determine this, and basically a, the stronger bite. And so, so that would actually determine uh, this fight. And uh, hopefully, uh, some of you can understand. This is basically just my opinion. And basically, if you think that Carcarodontosaurus would probably win that's your opinion as well so basically it's basically just a debate given an opinions that's all it is all right next uh, Magnus from Oslo Nor Norway hello Chris the ichthyosaurs disappeared before the extinction of the dinosaurs what are the main reasons for their demise well Magnus um, <clears throat> The the ichthyosaurs are pretty much the ichthyosaurs were pretty much uh, the group of the group of marine reptiles that actually lived around the Triassic all the way down to the pretty pretty close to the near to the late, pretty close to the late pretty close to the late Cretaceous, and so the ichthyosaurs were so dominant uh, in the Triassic and in the Jurassic, and basically these were very common around this kind of around these types of periods, the Triassic and the Jurassic. But when we get into the Cretaceous, they have actually their populations got smaller and smaller. Where basically we don't see that many species, and basically that uh, there's newer types of marine reptiles that are actually kind of taking over as well. Now with ichthyosaurs. I would say, considering in the Cretaceous, things were changing rapidly. His rising sea levels were basically happening, but even though that wouldn't be a problem for ichthyosaurs, ichthyosaurs would actually just take over whatever, wherever they can actually find uh, shallow areas where they can actually uh, find uh, their prey sources and pretty much actually can do whatever they please. But basically, new types of marine reptiles would actually come into play here where basically plesiosaurs have been around for a long time and basically plesiosaurs were actually the main competition for for ichthyosaurs is because you see in the cretaceous plesiosaurs were coming bigger and basically it's because you had elasmosaurus you know those types of those types of marine reptiles that actually uh, came around and basically were, were actually kind of competing against the ichthyosaurs for fish and squid and you know all those types of uh, uh, prey sources that ichthyosaurus actually pro that the food sources that ichthyosaurus actually do like as well because basically they're competing for the same food source and also is basically the other types of the other types of plesiosaurs the pliosaurs are basically the short-necked plesiosaurs basically that's what they're called uh, those those kinds of uh, animals were pretty much they, they kind of got larger in the 
in the early parts of the Cretaceous, but even though they nearly they nearly disappeared uh, in close towards the end of the Cretaceous. And it's basically because there is a type of marine reptile that showed up around 100 to 90 million years ago, and that is the Mosasaurs. The Mosasaurs were basically giant ver giant marine versions of monitor lizards and basically these types of animals were very aggressive and basically they actually competed every single animal that actually had some, some sort of food source it's because they ate fish they ate uh, small uh, basically juvenile marine reptiles they probably actually ate they probably ate juvenile versions of each other and basically they actually ate almost everything in the ocean that is actually food uh, to them. Smaller prey would actually be harder for them to catch, but even though they could actually uh, compete ichthyosaurs for the remaining food sources. But even though ichthyosaurs probably demise because of competition. Competition would actually be the reason why they actually fell uh, in the Cretaceous. Because, you see, competition would actually be the catalyst basically because if you have numerous types of competition competing for the same food source then basically uh, you're not going to last very long because you see if you're if you're a prep because basically if you're designed to actually for speed and basically catching fish and squid and basically you can't actually do you can't actually capture larger prey uh, to actually satisfy your needs then basically there would be another types of there would be other types of animals that would actually take over for that spot. But even though mosasaurs and plesiosaurs were actually the main competition, the small, the short-necked plesiosaurs like Dolichorhynchops were actually a lot faster than the long-necked plesiosaurs, and basically they probably had better speed than the ichthyosaurs. And so, like I said, competition would actually be the the uh, catalyst here. And so competition like the ple like the plesiosaurs and the mosasaurs and mosasaurs could actually kill ichthyosaurs very quickly and basically ichthyosaurs their last their last remaining species were pretty much really close to 80 million years and basically those were actually um, ichthyosaurs that actually were actually lasting um, and were pretty much just basically just relying on fish and squid a lot more but even though plesiosaurs were pretty much actually taking that taking that food source away and also you actually have mosasaurs that could kill ichthyosaurs really quickly as well and so ichthyosaurs would actually be a really good food source for mosasaurs and mosasaurs were actually really really good at, at predation and basically those those types of uh, animals were very aggressive and they actually had their moment and they had the moment of basically taking over as the top predator of the sea and that's that's pretty much what what really happened here is the numerous amount of competition all right that's it for now now next week will actually be a special episode so if you got a dinosaur or any other prehistoric animal you want me to talk about feel free to uh, email uh, me the types of an the animal that you want me to talk about at dinochris71 at gmail.com or otherwise uh, on the Facebook page I actually have uh, links to um, lists of dinosaur names and uh, prehistoric mammal names and there's marine reptile list names I mean you the list goes on and on uh, basically you can find lists all over the internet of basically the whatever type of prehistoric animal you want me to talk about and uh, and uh, kind of go through the um, specials uh in the in my youtube page and you can um and basically look over and see like what kind of uh, prehistoric animals already talked about and then basically uh you can actually um let me know and uh you can let me know on um by email or on facebook uh but also uh anytime if you want but you can still send me questions anytime about dinosaurs or other, or any other prehistoric life by emailing me at dinochris71 at gmail.com or otherwise go on my facebook page Prehistoric Facts with Dino Chris. Like the page, you can actually post your questions in the comments section on any Facebook post. But remember, keep your questions short and to the point. And uh, and I can't use the messenger because that's because I can't read all of those questions. And uh, 
you, know, you can also follow me on Twitter at CSGRILL. That's my Twitter page. I post pretty cool stuff on there. And also take care of the people around you. And also for your younger people out there, make sure to listen to your parents, your teachers, and your guardians. Those are the best motivation you can have for good education. It's very important to have a good education because with a good education, you get a good job in the future. And just so you know, the movie that I saw was the... Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows. I thought that was a really, I thought it was a fun movie. So basically, um, if you're a Ninja Turtles fan, uh, go see this film. It's actually, it's a very fun film. Uh, it basically has a lot of fanfare in this movie, and so basically, um, they did get Shredder correct, and also um, you get to see Krang and also Bebop and Rocksteady. And uh, Bebop and Rocksteady are very hilarious in this film. And uh, and uh, just so you know, and basically. Um, it's a fun film, and so go check it out if you're a Ninja Turtles fan. But I still kind of prefer uh, the animated series of the late 80s and early 90s, and also I kind of like the uh, early 90s uh, films as well because I thought those were pretty. Those were pretty much what my favorite Ninja Turtles movies. All right, that's it for now, and I'll see you guys uh, next week.